Hi everyone, welcome back to another Particle Illusion tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily blow away your text or logo as if it was dust or sand. Let's jump in. So I'm here in the Particle Illusion interface. I'm actually using After Effects and I've applied Particle Illusion to my dust text layer. But you don't have to use After Effects. You can use any host that supports Particle Illusion and layers with an alpha channel. Now to create this look, we're going to use a preset. So we'll do a search in the preset window by typing in burst. And we want this one here under image effects, logo burst. So I'm going to double click that to apply it. And it's kind of hard to see what's going on here. What we'll do is we'll come up here and under preview background, we'll choose composite over black. Okay, so if we press play, you can see we're getting something happening. Logo's bursting out, but we can't really see the entire logo. So we have to drag this emitter so it encompasses the entire logo or text. Not too big though, because particles in this area are actually invisible. And if we make it too big, then it's just going to be unnecessarily slow. So let's play that back again. And boom, the particles burst out. But we don't want that burst, so we have to make some adjustments. Just going to give myself a bit of space here. Actually, what I might do is come up to the view menu and choose edit. Ah, that's better. And with the emitter node selected, let's make some adjustments. So first of all, we'll make velocity zero. Ah, so that got rid of the velocity, but now the particles are falling downwards. And that's because we have weight set to 141. So we'll make that zero as well. And by making weight and velocity both zero for the emitter, it doesn't matter what settings we have for the particle. We'll no longer see either of those affecting the particle simulation. Okay. So that's looking pretty good, but we need to adjust the amount of particles. So if we click on number, you can see that's already been keyframed. So what I'm going to do is just choose constant. And we're going to start with, say, 1000. And we're going to keyframe that choosing linear. Just move forward one frame and then we'll make that zero. So that way we've got exactly the amount of particles that we want at the start. And because the next keyframe is zero, they're not constantly being born. If we drag that out, you can see we keep getting more and more particles. We'll just drag that back. And that's our starting point. Okay, so now we're going to get the particle motion using a force. So come up and click on force to add a force. And if we press play now, watch what happens. A big chunk of the particles gets pushed to the right. So that doesn't look quite right. But first of all, what we'll do is we'll just change the size of the force just to encapsulate all of the text like that. And we'll change the strength of the force to 2000. If we press play again, you can see they shoot off like that. But we don't want it to happen all at once, so we're going to select the force. Just being careful to make sure it's the force and not the emitter. Drag that to the right. Make sure we're at zero seconds. And come over and add a keyframe for position. Just choose linear. This is going to be over 50 frames. And we're going to drag that like that. You can already see what's happening there. Okay, so that's a good start. You can see how it's coming off in strips. So that's not ideal. So let's make some adjustments to the force. First thing we'll do is we'll change type from box to box grid. And we'll change direction Z to 25. That's going to push them up slightly. Okay. Now, because we're using a box grid, we have strength variation and direction variation. So we'll change strength variation to around 275 and we'll change direction variation to around 100. You can see how that's redistributing those particles. So that's definitely better, but they're still coming out in chunks. And we can fix that by using a new feature added in Particle Illusion 2023, edge softness. Let's increase edge softness to 50. So what this is doing is adding kind of a fall off around the edge of the force. 
and you can see how it's breaking up those particles quite nicely. So that already looks pretty good. Now that we've got that set up, what we can do is we can just play around with the random seed just by dragging that to see if there's a simulation that looks a little more appealing. I think I prefer the original random seed there. And that's looking pretty good. Now, you could go in and make further adjustments, maybe to things like motion randomness. You can see that that's de-emphasized at the moment. If we click on the particle node and let's come down a little bit, you can see motion randomness is zero. Let me change that to 25. Now the thing about this is that that's going to add motion randomness from frame zero. So the particles are already going to be moving before the forces hit them, which is no good. You can see they start to move. So you'd have to keyframe that and not motion randomness over life because that would add motion randomness over the life of the particle. What you'd have to do is set a keyframe for motion randomness at about the point where the force has actually finished its move. So we'd have to make that one zero like that and add a keyframe and then maybe increase that. So we start to introduce some motion randomness after the force has finished its move. And by then the particles are already, you know, they're already moving and it's pretty hard to tell what kind of a difference it's making. We probably want to increase the life of the particles. You can see they're disappearing. So I'll just make this one 100. And I'll also make the particles themselves 100 as well. All right, excellent. Now, when I first did this particular look, it was a few years back, and particle illusion has really evolved since then. We've got things like turbulence, and we've also got fluid dynamics. If you wanted to add position turbulence to this, you'd have to keyframe the position turbulence again at a point where the force has finished its move. Otherwise, you're going to have the particles moving with that turbulence, especially if you have the auto evolve setting turned on, this one here. They're going to be moving from the very beginning of the animation. We've got to come down also in order to see that and increase the position turbulence. You can see how that's moving the particles from frame zero, which is not going to be very effective for this look. So you'd have to keyframe that from about there if you wanted to add that. But once again, the particles are already moving quite nicely, and I'm not sure how much more that would add to this. And also, fluid dynamics kind of makes that unnecessary. Let's take a look. So I'm just going to, first of all, make that zero again. And I'll just bring that back down to zero. All right, let's add fluid dynamics. Now, we're not going to enable fluid dynamics for this force. We're going to use fluid dynamics on a separate force. So once again, click to add a force. And just grab the, we can, just grab the corner of that. And just make it nice and big so that it covers the entire stage. Now, of course, by default, it has a strength value of 100. So it's going to add to the amount of force pushing these particles out. We want to make this a fluid dynamics force, but we also want to make the strength zero. So this is not adding to the actual force, it's just introducing fluid dynamics, that's its function. So let's see how that looks. Okay, so now it really looks like it's underwater, doesn't it? or in some kind of fluid. Let's increase the simulation detail to 64 and have a look at that. Very nice. You can see how we're getting this really nice responsiveness in Particle Illusion 2023. Makes it so much easier to be creative. Okay, so what a difference that makes. 
and it really makes using turbulence unnecessary. But we want this to be more like dust or sand and less like water. So we can use another feature that was introduced in Particle Illusion 2023, which is down here at the bottom of the emitter controls, affected by fluids. So currently at its default setting, all of the particles are being affected. But what if we change this to 50? What that's gonna do is give us a 50-50 mix of the fluid's influence on each particle and the particle's original motion. And that's going to make it look a little less like fluid and a little more like this is being blown in the wind. And one last thing I wanna just mention is also a new feature in 2023, which is swirl turbulence. So for adding a little bit more detail to this, we just bring that up. I'm going to add quite a lot there and play that back. It's a bit difficult to see, so what I'll do is just come back and reset affected by fluids. And let's just play that back again. Uh, so now you can really see that turbulence that's been added. So maybe what we'll do is we'll make affected by fluids, say, I don't know, 75. And just dial that in a bit more. That's nice, isn't it? That could easily be something that's not necessarily underwater. Yeah, it could be blown by the wind. Very nice. One thing you might want to do is just turn on motion blur. And in the project settings, maybe just increasing the frames. I like mine to be quite a lot, maybe 12. Just so we get less separation between the particles. Looking good. So I'm just going to click apply. And just going to come back into my dust composition here in After Effects. I'm just going to turn on this Particle Illusion logo. And now just jumping back into Particle Illusion, you can see that the text has been replaced with the logo. But notice how the emitter is the wrong size. It's cutting off the top and the bottom. So we have to rescale that. Once again, just making sure that we don't have too much black space around the outside because that's going to create invisible particles and affect performance. So something like that will do. And that also means that we've got to rescale the force as well because that's going to come across the logo and it's not going to affect the top and the bottom. So let's come back to zero so it doesn't have to cache and just make that a little bigger. Like that. All the other settings can stay the same. And there we go. So all of those parameters that we adjusted look just as good with this logo. Okay, so hopefully you found that useful. Be sure to visit borisfx.com to learn more about Particle Illusion and to download an absolutely free standalone version. For now, this is John Dickinson. I'll see you in another tutorial.